So with the new season comes new playlists, new events, and new nerfs and buffs to legendary parts grinds. This is my legendary parts farming methods for season three. Let's go. Real quick before we get into it, if you're looking for any of my Motorfest tunes, you can go to MilitiaGamingCo.com, click on Motorfest Pro Settings from the top of the page, and it takes you to our Pro Settings app. This has my tunes and a bunch from the community, so check that out when you get a chance. Let's get into it. There's a lot to be said in this video. There are timestamps in the description. Go directly to the section that you're looking for. This is one of the longer ones. So let's get into it. A couple of notes here at the top of the video. There's a couple of things that we used to do that we can no longer do. The first one is Groundworks. Groundworks used to be a really good part farm, but now you're getting four parts per category for a total of eight parts. And it takes about three minutes and 30 seconds ish, depending on the class. So this is no longer a good method. Please discard that from my previous videos. And then replaying feats over and over again has been killed with this season three update. They put a 30 minute timer on the feats so you can only get your rewards for each feat one time within 30 minutes. And finally, there is a new event that took the Motorfest internet by storm called scene seven, the love story. It was recently patched, but it still remains a good method. I'll go through that in detail in just a bit. For those of you who are new to Motorfest, here's a quick rundown on the setup you should be running in order to farm legendary parts. Firstly, if you don't have any parts for your class, then the first step is to max out your perf level, which you can see in the top right corner when selecting your car. Next, you'll want to make sure that you've maxed out your legend points in the Lucky and Goldfinger categories, and then keep grinding until you have seven legendary parts, one for each of the parts on the car. Once you have that, then you need to re affix all of those parts to make sure you have Lucky and Goldfinger with the max amount of percentage possible, which is 25.5% Lucky and 6% Goldfinger per part on the car. And that gives you a grand total of 178.5 for Lucky and 42% for Goldfinger. And that's not including the Legend Points. You get an additional bonus with your Legend Points. All of that together gives you the best chance to get Legendaries every time you do an event. Now that you've got that, you're ready to start the grind for specific sets. Now keep in mind that the set bonus itself cannot be changed. So that's the perk that defines the part. There are six different set bonuses and seven parts for each one of those. So there's a total of 42 unique parts that you can get for each class of car or boat, plane, yada, yada. All right, let's get into the best events for everything except dragster, boat, and plane. We're gonna talk about those completely separate. So basically all of the ground vehicles except dragster. So let's talk about the best seven days of grinding we've ever had. And that is with the scene seven, the love story, which is in the Hollywood action playlist. For the last seven days, we've been able to grind this event and make about eight parts every single run, sometimes nine, sometimes 12 if you had loot digger. And now that fun is over. They patched this event, however, the patch actually still makes this event viable when you compare it to other events. So you used to get eight parts, like I said, now it's only rewarding two to three parts per run. As long as you have Lucky and Goldfinger affixes completely maxed out on all your parts and in your legend points. I tested this 10 times before the patch and 10 times after the patch and recorded all the results. After the patch, we're looking at a drop rate of around 17.86%, whereas right before it was 18.67. So that could be a variance in the RNG and they probably didn't change the drop rate at all. So the number of legendaries compared to the total number of parts you're going to get is around the same ratio. Now this event still takes one minute to complete and then restart, which includes the loading screens. And the event itself is only about 45 to 50 seconds if you do it correctly. And what you're seeing in the background gameplay is actually the fastest path through this event. So pay attention. But what do all these numbers get you? Well, now you can earn about 180 parts per hour with about 30 to 35 legendary parts per hour. Now, I personally think they nerfed this too much. It was really nice to be able to get a full legendary set within a couple of hours. And now it will take two to three times longer using this event. But the event is still good. It still gives you a legendary part about 18% of the time. So it's really not that bad. And it's such a short event. So to earn two to three parts every single time, it's not really a big deal. I think it's okay. It's still good, but it's not the best. For the best method, I actually prefer the Hummer Express event from the Electric Odyssey playlist. Even though it's not quite as fast as it was in season two, there was a reset point that allowed you to skip a big portion of the race, but they patched that in season two. The good news is you can still do it, but you just have to drive like a little bit farther. The background gameplay is the path you need to take. Again, I tested this 10 times and recorded the results and you can get around five to six parts per run. 
and the legendary drop rate seems to be a bit higher than the love story at 23 percent now it does take a minute and 40 seconds to complete and then restart which includes the loading screens which actually gives you about 36 times per hour that you can run this and that gives you 216 parts per hour with 40 to 50 of those being legendaries now the reason i like this event over the love story is because the legendary drop rate seems to be a little bit higher now it could be rng but i did test it 10 times and out of 10 times we got 23 percent legendaries versus the 17.8 percent legendaries on the love story so i like it because you just get more legendaries you can also get more parts in total per hour so if you're grinding from a completely stock class with no parts this will actually be a lot faster. Well, not a lot faster, but a little bit faster. So I do prefer this one instead. Now, with the data from the love story and the data from Hummer Express, we can see that IVT increased the drop rate for legendaries. You're now earning 400% more legendary parts. That's four times the amount of legendary parts as we did in season two. Now that is outstanding and very much appreciated. All right, let's talk about another event that it's a little bit more passive. It's not really intentional and that's the grand races. For this one, I tested five grand races and recorded the results. I did end up getting podium on each of those races, which is at least third place. And I'm not really sure if it goes down with your finishing position if you get less than third place, but I got nine parts for each race. And the legendary drop rate is around 26%, and you can complete around five to six of these depending on the routes every single hour. Now that math comes out to 45 parts per hour and about 12 legendary parts. Now. It's really not a lot compared to the two previous methods, but if you're doing grand races just simply to do grand races, you're going to get legendary parts and it's sort of more of a passive way to earn them, but I figure this information is good just so you know. Now, obviously, grand racing is far from the best option in terms of earning parts, really for two reasons. One, you don't really get to focus solely on one class and you don't really get to choose which class you're doing. And two, because of the loading in and out and waiting for the lobby to start and the car selection screen, you can only get about five to six races in per hour. So like I said, just not really the best method, but I thought the information was relevant. All right, that is it for ground vehicles. Let's move on to planes. Now planes are a problem because they took away the feats grinding method. You used to be able to go through a feat, rewind, start the feat again, and get a part every single time. You could really grind out planes and have basically all your parts within a few hours, but now you can't do that because they added a 30 minute timer. So you have two options for planes. You can look for treasure, or you can use the plane events. I suggest using the events because it's a lot faster, but if you wanna enjoy yourself and just chill out and fly around the island, you can search for treasure, which I will explain in just a little bit. All right, so for the events, I strongly recommend the event called Skyline Ride. It's in the Ocean and Sky playlist, and you can get around five to six parts for every single time you do that run. Most of the time, I got six, and the legendary drop rate for that is about 25% and it takes only one minute, 55 seconds to complete or right around two minutes. But the important thing is you have to use the route that I'm showing you on screen. You do not have to go through every single checkpoint. You can just kind of get near them and you can skip a bunch of them and still be under the amount of time. Just make sure your difficulty is set to the easiest one and then you can skip basically two or three, four or five of them in a row. As long as you go through another one, it resets how much time it's docking you for missing a checkpoint. So just follow the path that you're watching. It's the best way to get through it. And I think it's the fastest way, even though it's not like the highest on the leaderboard, but the amount of real time is about one minute and 55 seconds. Now with this, you can do this event about 25 to 30 times per hour, which gives you 150 to 180 parts. And the legendaries per hour on that is about 37 to 45, somewhere in that range. It's actually really Really good for planes it actually matches what that hummer express does for cars all right let's move on to dragsters and then i'll talk about treasure hunting in just a little bit so for dragsters this is also another point of frustration and to be honest with you there really isn't a good method all of the methods here are completely painful they don't give you a lot of parts and it takes forever. But I tested a bunch of things and I think this is the best way to do it. If you guys do find a better drag parts grind, please let me know in the comments and I'll pin it because we definitely need a good way to earn drag parts now that the feats are completely nuked. All right, the first is obviously the drag events. There are two of them in the game and I recommend the Vegas Strip. You can finish it slightly faster than the other one. So for the Vegas Strip, you're earning two to three parts every single time you do it and the legendary drop rate is about 5%. It's very low. It feels to me like they just forgot to increase the drop rate because all of the other drop rates are like 20% or higher, but this one is all the way down at 5%. So not only are you getting not very many parts at all, but you're also just getting a very low percentage of legendaries. Now this event takes about a minute 45 to complete it and then 
restart it. So that includes the loading screens, which means you can get about 85 parts per hour and only about four to six legendary parts per hour. I mean, it's it's god awful, but it's one of only two events that you can do drag races in. So this is the best one. The next option is a little bit weird, but you can do all of the slaloms and the escapes. Now, hear me out before you discard this. Basically, you do the whole feat in a different car. And in some cases, you can actually do it in a plane. And then just before you finish the event, you just use the quick swap feature to switch into a drag car, and then the game will reward your drag car. Now, I timed myself doing every single slalom and every single escape in the game, and it took about 15 minutes to do the slaloms and about 15 minutes to do the escape. So you can do both of these in about 30 minutes, which is actually convenient because they all have a 30 minute timer. So if you wanted to just keep repeating this, doing slaloms and escapes over and over again, you could, and it should work out to about 30 minutes each time. So how many parts are you getting and how many legendaries? I got a total of 36 parts in that 30 minutes of time, and of those, I only got two legendaries, which is the same pace as doing the drag events. I believe I got really bad RNG though, because usually you get a few more legendaries from those feats. But basically, I think you can get around four to six legendaries per hour by doing this method, which again is the same as doing the drag events but it might not be as boring because you're actually like fast traveling to different places you're doing different feats it's a little bit different as opposed to just waiting for those green lights doing your perfect burn and then driving straight for you know nine or ten seconds and then waiting for loading screens it's just i i literally almost fell asleep during that all right i mentioned treasure boxes so let's talk about that because this applies to both the planes and the dragsters and honestly the boats but we'll get into boats in a minute this method is not new, however, I have to mention it here because it's literally the fastest way to get legendaries for drag parts. You open your map, you zoom into various treasure locations, we have a map linked in the Discord, so if you want to do that, head to MilitiaGamingCo.com and click on Discord so you can join. Once you find a box, you can fast travel nearby and then switch to a drag car once you get close to that box and then you just rinse and repeat that. So in a 15 minute session of doing this, I was able to find two legendary parts and I didn't really find any of the legendary boxes which do exist and they reward a lot more legendaries. So hopefully you can find those when you're doing it. The legendaries I got dropped from purple and blue boxes, but if that type of luck continues, if we just have bad luck, you're looking at eight legendaries per hour. Now obviously the RNG gods are going to have to have the final say in here, but in general, this is going to be the fastest method because you're getting about double the amount of parts as you would by doing those events. So treasure hunting is a thing. Now, from what I understand, one yellow box is on the map at some point. So you have to go find that and then you can back out of the game and relaunch into a new server and you should be able to find another yellow box. I'm not sure if you have to do that. It's just something that I've heard. So take that with a grain of salt. Anyway, my suggestion is actually to do the feats like I mentioned before, but then when you detect a treasure nearby, you should definitely drive over to it and get it and then continue on with your feats by simply fast traveling back to the feat that you were about to do. All right, and finally, let's talk about power boats. The shortest event is called Rocket Start. However, I also tested an event called Yacht Surfing, and here are the results. So for Rocket Start, you can complete it in about two minutes and 17 seconds on a really good run, and with the loading screens, it makes it about five times every 15 minutes for a total of 26 parts and five legendaries. Now the drop rate for this is 19.23%, it's pretty good. And you can get about 104 parts per hour and 20 legendaries. It's actually not too bad. However, if you choose to do yacht surfing, which can be a little bit annoying because of all the waves, you can complete that in about the same time. It's two minutes and 20 seconds on a good run. And with the loading screens, it's about the same, about five runs every 15 minutes or so. However, this event rewards a lot more parts. You get 39 parts for that same amount of time, and you can get 11 legendaries, which the drop rate is much higher, 28.21%. And that gives you 156 parts per hour with 44 legendaries every single hour. That's more than double you can get with the Rocket Start event. And Rocket Start is not faster by half. It's not half as long as Yacht Surfing. So that's definitely the best one to go with. I strongly recommend Yacht Surfing if your goal is to get as many parts as you possibly can, as fast as you possibly can. Now you could do the same method as with the Dragsters. You can go around completing all of the feats. However, if you remember in my testing, I was only earning about two legendaries every 15 minutes. So it's kind of a lot slower. I strongly recommend the Yacht Surfing event and a little tip to go faster on that event is to make sure you're holding the left stick down to activate the trimming effect and make sure you're nosing in the air in small bursts to keep your speed up. The world record on this course is one minute 50 seconds, so there's definitely some room for improvement on my run, which is 220. Obviously, 
30 seconds of improvement. I'm not really the best at boats. I think for the most part, it's a decent time. And if you can get your time lower, obviously you're gonna get a lot more parts. And lastly, I just wanna remind you guys that every single bit of testing that I did, all of these numbers, all this math, was done with fully maxed out Lucky and Goldfinger on the affixes and no Loot Digger set bonus. I did not have Loot Digger for any of these tests. My numbers would have been completely different and a lot more had I had a full set of Loot Digger. That's not really the way that these grinds happen, right? You don't start out with a full set of Loot Digger. Usually over the course of the grind, you'll eventually get Loot Digger, which then speeds up the second half or the back end of the grinding. So I did all of the testing without Loot Digger, but I did do it with Lucky and Goldfinger, which I strongly recommend. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully this helps and I will catch you on the next one. Trigger out.